lover of flow. to the show it's been so long since the last time i posted i've been on vacation for the last few weeks but now i'm back i got brand new material for you from here on out i'm posting every monday and thursday so subscribe rate it check me out all right also be sure to check out my new website www.undergroundwellness.com be sure to join the forum the forum is already cracking right now People are posting ideas, exchanging information, asking questions, answering questions, uh, debating. I mean, it's awesome. It's going down. So make sure you join up. Uh, today's topic is Splenda. You know, this innocent yellow box with the Olympic rings and the American diabetes sponsorship and the ideal for the whole family deal on top. I mean, what is it, though? You know, I go over people's houses and I go through the refrigerators, I go through their freezers and their cabinets and I always pull out that I can't believe it's not butter stuff. And I ask them, well, if it's not butter, then what is it? You know what I'm saying? And they always go, well, I don't know. Well, Splenda isn't quite sugar, then what is it? And I'm going to tell you what it is in a second. It's actually the product of insecticide research. True story. Queen Elizabeth College, about 1975, I think it was, uh, two guys in the chemistry laboratory are trying to create new insecticides. You've got an a Indian grad student, you've got his advisor, and they're adding sulfuryl chloride to sugar molecules. And the advisor tells the student to test it, but the student mishears him or misunderstands him and tastes it instead. And it was sweet, and eventually the advisor started putting it in his coffee, and that money ball just started rolling and now we've got the yellow box. You know what I'm saying? That's some weirdness and that's what they're selling to you, insecticide. Now here's how you make Splenda. You drop the, the hydrogen out of a sugar molecule and you add chlorine, all right? Chlorine, the EPA says, is a class one carcinogen. It's a class one cancer causer. What is that about? You know what I'm saying? Chlorine, it doesn't exist in its free form anywhere in nature. You have to like artificially make it. All right. So they'll tell you that chlorine is like a, a regular part of food. But no, that's not chlorine. That's chloride, sodium chloride, uh, potassium chloride. Those are natural forms. And so they add this chlorine to the sugar molecule and they force it to bond with carbon. But when you do that, you've got something called an organochlorine or a chlorocarbon. These are toxic. You know, that carbon acts as like a delivery system to send that toxic chlorine into the cells. That's how it works as an insecticide. So check this out. I've got this book here by Dr. Mercola. It's called Sweet Deception. It's all about um, artificial sweeteners um, and the, the nonsense behind them and some alternatives as well. And he's got this list here of other organochlorines, other chlorocarbons, other things that have the same chemical structure as Splenda. Check this out. DDT, an insecticide, banned in North America due to severe toxicity. Uh, Chlordane, another insecticide, Banned in 1988 due to harm to humans and the environment. And I'm skipping around here. Uh, PCBs used as electrical insulators and heat agents. Banned in many countries due to its inability to break down in the environment and food chain. Uh, mustard gas, chemical warfare, lethal respiratory poison. And it's a trip because at the end of this list, we've got sucralose, Splenda, food sweetener, the only organochlorine ever used for human consumption. And what's a trip about this list is that many of these chemicals that are on this list at one time were legal. You know what I'm saying? People thought that they were safe and eventually they were like, oh my gosh, duh, these are toxic. So let's ban them. It's kind of like cigarettes. You know, doctors used to recommend that their patients smoke cigarettes and then 30 years later, they're like, oh my God, I'm an idiot. These are causing cancer. And that is what I feel is going to happen with Splenda. 
you're eating a chemical, all right? Now, you got the whole, it's made from sugar, uh, so it tastes like sugar marketing thing going on. Well, that's just some really roundabout logic right there because white bread at one time came from whole wheat, didn't it? But that doesn't make it good for you. Now, you could take any disaccharide, which is a sugar like sucrose, and it's made out of two simple sugars, right? And it's always made with glucose and fructose. Or lactose is always made with glucose and galactose. So glucose is always part of the structure of a disaccharide. And so they start with sucrose, as I said, fructose plus glucose. And by the end of all the processing whatnot, you've got something that's fructose plus galactose. The glucose is gone. So your body can't break it down because it has never had to deal with that chemical structure ever, ever before in the history of like mankind. It is not natural. Even though they tell you it's natural, it's not. Okay? Is Splenda safe? I don't know. And neither does anyone else because there's, there's only been five published human safety trials on Splenda. And the longest one was 13 weeks. And people are eating this every single day. You would think that they would put a little more time and research into this before they start giving, you know, an organochlorine, a chlorocarbon, a poison and telling people to put it in their coffee. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make sense. Five human safety uh, studies. That's that's garbage. Um, it's a wonder how this stuff gets approved. Uh, alternatives, though. All right. You don't have to rely upon Splenda. You don't have to buy a toxin. All right. You can buy Stevia. OK, I've done a, a, a video on Stevia previously. Go check it out. All right. Um, another one is do I have it here. Sweet leaf. This is a, a, a sweetened Stevia dropper. I have a great flavor right here. I've had the um, chocolate as well. Uh, the Valencia orange is great. You can get that at a supplement store as well or at sweetleaf.com. Uh, yacone syrup. Yacone is a root. Okay, it's a root plant. That's Y-A-C-O-N, yacone syrup. It's made out of FOS, which is fructo oligosaccharides. And so it's sweet, but your body doesn't break it down. Okay, the good bacteria are going to feed on it in your intestines and you're going to get gas like no other if you get a lot of gas, if you um, have too many bad bacteria in your intestines. So if you eat your cone syrup and you get lots of gas, that means you probably got a dysbiosis, too much bad bacteria, you know, as opposed to good bacteria in the stomach. But definitely go ahead and give that a try. Um, Lohan, that's uh, L O. Capital H-A-N, just like Lindsay. And that's another one. You can get more information about Lohan at sweetfiber.net. Definitely another safe alternative for you, okay? Uh, another one of my favorites is xylitol. Xylitol is a sugar alcohol. Um, the reason why I like it is, is because, you know, beyond being a sweetener, it has antimicrobial and antibacterial effects. You know, there's been a lot of research on um, uh, tooth decay and uh, uh, dental caries with xylitol, and it shows that it reduces the incidence of both, okay? Make sure, though, that you start with just a little bit of xylitol because if you eat too much, you're going to have some serious GI distress. You're going to get bubble guts. You're going to get gas. You're going to get um, bloating. You're going to get some dia. You know what I'm saying? You definitely don't want that, so make sure you experiment with just a little bit at a time. People are going to ask me about honey. Okay, the only honey you should be eating is uncooked, unfiltered honey. Okay, don't believe the hype about raw honey because you've got some weird government standard on that thing that can allow the heating of honey up to like 130 degrees. All right, so that's not really raw anymore if it went above 130 degrees. When you go over 117 degrees with honey, you start to lose all the beneficial effects that it has, okay? So be careful with the honey. That's unfiltered and uncooked. That's it, okay? And then lastly, people are going to ask about agave. Now, if you watched my uh, video about juice a few weeks ago, fructose is like the number one most pro-diabetic sugar out there, all right? And so agave is mostly fructose. So try to stay away from that one as well. I'm out. Subscribe. Rate the video. Check out the website. Join the forum. Coming back on Thursday. Peace.